All right, Stephen, we had a story we wanted to take a closer look at. And of course, it does involve the intersection of technology and geopolitics because there's been a huge battle going on between the U.S. and China, which we've covered a number of times here on the rundown. They've opened a new front, however, and it involves the open source chip technology, which we know as Risk Five. American lawmakers, which are citing national security concerns, are pressuring the U.S. Biden administration to place restrictions on the ability of U.S. companies to be involved with Risk V because it is widely utilized in China. The technology competes with proprietary chip architectures from ARM and Intel and has applications that range from smartphone chips to advanced artificial intelligence processors. Lawmakers fear that China is exploiting a culture of open collaboration amongst American companies to bolster their own semiconductor industry, which will potentially undermine U.S.'s leadership in the chip field and could potentially support China's military modernization. Now, longtime listeners of the rundown know that we have spoken a lot about Risk V and the whole situation that's going on between the U.S. and China. It's really no surprise that we're starting to see these two things merge today. But I guess the, where we want to start this conversation, Stephen, is how should we look at this situation? Yeah, well, I got to say, my first reaction to this is, oh my gosh, please don't tell lawmakers how widespread Linux is used in China. Um, and honestly, the situation is very similar in that you have a, a true, a truly open, as in free speech, as in it's out there, um, technology that really you can't stuff in the bottle no matter how much you want to. Now, it's true that there are companies in the United States working on advanced RISC-V platforms, and some of those are, well, honestly, the most advanced RISC-V platforms. But that being said, um, RISC-V is, is an open standard. It is an open instruction set architecture. It is widely used. It is widely understood around the world. There is literally, literally no way that any amount of government pressure can stop Risk v from being used in China. So let's just get that out of the way first. The genie is out of the bottle. There are many Chinese companies already working on developing their own Risk v processors. Um, some of them are doing really, really great work on their Risk v processors. Um, some of them are spinoffs from the uh, American and other European technology companies, and some of them are working on this on their own. There are implementations of RISC-V that are being manufactured in China that are uh, moving forward, a lot of embedded uh, processors, but also a lot more higher, let's say not say high performance, but higher performance processors are being manufactured now. There are extensions uh, to the RISC-V uh, instruction set that allow you to do things like machine learning. Um, there's uh, RISC-V processors that are being embedded in, in, in other um, alongside other accelerator chips and accelerator platforms. So, so basically this thing is out there. And not only that, but uh, RISC-V technically is overseen by a Swiss uh, firm, which is politically neutral, of course, and outside the reach, of, well, at least somewhat outside the reach of uh, the U.S. and other Western governments. So the whole thing just feels incredibly, incredibly short-sighted and misguided. Um, but that being said, it actually reflects a real concern, which is, and this should be certainly is a concern at AM or at uh, ARM. It should be a concern at AMD and NVIDIA and Qualcomm and especially at Intel, which is that RISC-V presents the possibility of an alternate future where those companies don't dominate the uh, instruction set architectures, where the most advanced chips are based on something that truly is a free and open instruction set architecture and any company can work on it. And in that case, well, lawmakers won't have anything to say about that. And like I said, the, 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 the cat's out of the barn, the horse is out of the bag, I don't know. I don't see how you can do anything about this. Do you see any, any what's going on here? How can the U.S. do this, Tom? Well, the U.S. can do this because they think that they control all of the ways to manufacture this. And as we talked about before, the U.S. is putting pressure on China to kind of shape up, right? So they're trying to convince manufacturers of this lithography machines that are required for chip manufacturing not to ship those over there. They're trying to create an embargo. What they didn't count on is the fact that, and I hate to say it, capitalism works a little too well sometimes. 
The reason why Risk V never really took off was because nobody could make any money off of it. When you look at what Intel and AMD and NVIDIA are doing, that's what capitalist companies do. When you look at what happened with ARM, and we covered that debacle a lot in 2022, and when we look at the plans that, that SoftBank has for ARM now that they're public, they want to start charging more for ARM IP to get their money back, right? Okay, that all makes sense. So when you combine the fact that everybody is focused on, on squeezing every little cent that they can out of this architecture, and you look at what China's facing right now with their inability to get advanced manufacturing equipment to do all this chip stuff, what can they do? Well, I'm sure that the U.S. and its allies were hoping nothing, that they're going to have to come to the negotiating table and we're going to have to figure out a way to make this work. They found a way to cut that Gordian knot, basically. They adopted Risk V. It's open source. Everything's out there. We can develop it. We can take what people are putting into it and put it into ourselves because, as we have talked about, the intellectual property protections in China are a little more mm, flexible, if you will. And anybody will admit that. So what you've got is a country that is pouring resources into doing this and basically saying, we're going to stake our claim here. Now, for those of you out there that are thinking that, you know, this is like uh, Russian Linux distributions or North Korea's Red Star OS that runs on all their PCs. No, this is not that. This is fundamentally shifting that architecture. So think about it like this. How many U.S. companies can you think of that are actively trying to do business in China? Lots of them, right? I'll pick the biggest one, Apple. Apple wants to sell iPhones in China because it's a huge growing market. What will happen if the majority of the chips that are manufactured in China are risk five and not Apple ARM-based architectures? Problems, because now you have fundamentally incompatible technology. So China will just say, we're not gonna open our markets to the West because nothing from the West will run on our architectures. If you want to come to China, you have to redevelop your applications, your software, your hardware to be compatible with RISC-V. So in essence, they're flipping the tables over and forcing people to come to their bargaining table to be admitted to China as opposed to having to come begging hat in hand to get the technology to play on the same playing field as the West. Yeah, and I think that it's important to recognize that, as I said, some of the most powerful RISC-V processors are being developed in China already. So Alibaba has announced um, a series of chips that are doing some really impressive uh, performance numbers um, built on RISC-V. That is completely out of the hands of the U.S. to control. Um, the uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences, the Institute of Computing Technology over there, also has a high-performance RISC-V processor project. And frankly, as you mentioned, you know, you talk about companies in the West like Apple. Um, well, Western Digital, we know, has been actively involved in developing their own RISC-V processors to replace ARM and other um, embedded processors in things like SD, SSDs and flash controllers and so on. Um, we suspect that companies like Apple and Google and Amazon and more are also developing their own RISC-V processors as a way to hedge against whatever is going to happen with ARM. And frankly, we've seen so many times, I mean, heck, it's in the news on a, on a, on a weekly basis now that companies are hungry to a, avoid having to pay the high price for proprietary processors and accelerators. RISC-V has got to look awful, awful tempting to those companies. And frankly, it's, it's available. Um, it can be started as a Skunk Works project. It can be started as something where you basically bring in a team from a university who's been working on this as a way to learn about processor design. You could bring them in, you could give them some funding, and you could see what they can do with RISC-V. I think it's only a matter of time before RISC-V becomes a very serious threat, not just to ARM, but to the Intel x86 architecture as well. And again, that's not going to be something that anyone, anyone can control. And I think, um, I'll just go on record right here now, I suspect that we're going to be looking at a massive um, uh, computing shift. So we just watched Apple shift from x86 to ARM. I think 10 years from now, we're going to be seeing a massive shift of the entire computing industry from x86 and ARM to RISC-V. 